Right, as we continue in our series, we turn to this uh, story about what Jesus is telling us about the parable of the two sons. Now, as you look here, this uh, message starts in verse 28 in Matthew 21. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And the, uh, the son answered, I will not. But afterward, he regretted and then went. All right? Then came the second son and said, Likewise, but the son actually said, I will go, but he did not go. Now, folks, who actually did the father's will? Answer me. First or second? First, right? Actually, not really. Lah, huh? Both of them actually didn't. One only did not say that he was going and he did it. He also did not follow, follow the father's will, right? So yes, everybody answered first, all right? And then Jesus said to them, and this is quite interesting because I'm going to show you how is it related to the second part of this parable. Now, assuredly, Jesus said, assuredly I say to you that the tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him, and when you saw it, you did not afterwards relent and believe in him. Jesus, we pray for your word. We pray that today, the truth of how you want to bless us even living a life of integrity will just overwhelm us, lead us, guide us, and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, what is this topic of integrity? Now, many people say that integrity is what you say is what you do. Good definition? I think it is, you know. And uh, other people say like integrity is doing what is right when nobody is watching. Imagine this, if you're a teacher of kids, TNCC kids, right? I, I love it that the way pastor says that your reward is in heaven because nobody is there to cheer you on, right? The kids sometimes bring out the worst in you. Nobody agree, okay? <laughs> well, it does with me. But then you know what? It is true, you know, your reward is in heaven. When nobody sees it, Jesus sees it. So we honor you for all that you've done in their lives. And... Other definitions like integrity are also include morally sound. That means you, 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 you make decisions that are sound morally. Now, as you know, we have just come through with a pandemic. And unfortunately, as much as we are celebrating now of the phase, the season that we've gone through, we are yet in another phase. You know, it's the recession now. I don't know whether you all heard. Some people are declaring that a recession has happened. For me, I, I'm an investor as well. Whew, last couple of weeks has been a bloodbath in my investments, all right? Tech stocks, you know what I mean, right? So, yet, it is a musim kebuloran, yeah? A time of, of famine, all right? Famine in not just talking about food, but famine in the natural as well. So, people are trying their best to be successful in this life. They're trying. They can do all kinds of things using their, their, their minds, their intellect, their wisdom. But whenever man does it, it is always not always successful and it's always dependent on themselves. Now, the next definition of how the way we can see integrity is integrity is evident in character. Now, a lot of people, if I were to ask everybody right now, what do you think of integrity? A lot of people will say that it is honesty. But folks, it's, to me, I think integrity is more than that. It's a character that we all have. And what more, if you're believers of Christ, it will be evident in the way you carry out your life. We have the fruit of the Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, right? So these are the things that is a blessing, not just for us, but it's a blessing to the people around. And very often, a person who carries their life with integrity will be seen by people. Amen? Now, God, if, as we went through last week's, last week's uh, uh, message, I, I love this verse that Pastor shared. You know, in um, 
Joshua 1 verse 8. That be careful, that we will meditate on God's word. That's what Joshua said. God said to Joshua to meditate on God's word day and night. And then you shall and be careful to be to follow everything that is written in it. And you know, everything in God's word, it, it may talk about God's law, but actually everything in God's word points to Jesus. And the, the, the verse goes on to say, you will, when you follow all that God is leading us to do, you will experience good success. Everybody say good success. Online too, you can type in a chat. Good success. So God does want you to succeed. God wants you to succeed, but in ways sometimes not the way we think. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, the world is trying so hard to, to, to experience the abundant life. The world is trying to. And sometimes people, you know, you hear the word cut corners, you know, to be able to uh, 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 experience blessings. And you know what? Let me just tell you that if you have Christ in you, that is the best kind of success you can experience because the blessings of God on the righteous maketh one rich but add no sorrow. Okay? God has given us Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy like Pastor shared last week, has given us the power to receive wealth. Everybody say power. So you got to know that God wants you to be successful. And I'm not just, if you listen to this message carefully, it's not just talking about money, friends. It's not. Not just about money. We're also talking about all the blessings in your life. And we want blessings that are from God. Not the way we try to produce it with our own strength, but we want blessings that will last forever. And we want blessings that are without stress. Everybody say without stress. Yeah, I want that kind of blessings. That I don't have to use my strength, my performance to try to keep. Amen? But there is a problem. Okay, we're going to go to the next section about a problem. Now, we're going to see about this word sin. The, the world understands even this definition of sin, right? And we're going to understand whether sin is a fruit or a root. Now we go back all the way to Genesis, right? When the, the, the serpent tempted Adam and Eve. And the serpent came to Eve and, she, and the serpent said this to, to Eve. This is a test of integrity. Did God say what he would do? Yeah. <laughs> now this is what the serpent said to Eve. Has God indeed said, you shall surely, you shall not eat the, of every tree of the garden. All right, this is what, who said this? Can we have an interactivity here? Who said this? The devil, right? The devil said too. But is this what was actually said by God? All right? Yes, no? You see some faces? No? Let's just look at what was actually said by God in the earlier chapter, right? Now you do a, uh, uh, a, a, a game where you can look and tell me if you can see the difference because on your this side my hand all right on this side on your right it is what God said a chapter earlier right and on the right is what the devil said now tell me what is the difference you see between these two you can put it in the chat as well on YouTube Facebook where you're watching now, I will just present it to you, okay? On your right is what God said the chapter earlier. And let me just tell you that, okay? One thing that stands out to me in this verse is this word freely. Everybody say freely. Freely. What the devil said, make God look cheap. Okay? Oh no, on, on, on your left, he said, you shall not eat. You shall not. Sometimes with parents, right, you give so many commandments, hey, don't do this, don't do that. Okay, I, I am trying my best also not to do that, especially when we tell people we can also have positive reinforcement, right? Positive reinforcement is what God has done. He says, he, He's very generous because He says, you may freely eat. Oh my, that is such generosity. 
all the abundance, but only one do not eat. Okay? And the devil wants to focus on the one. Right? God said, freely, everything, every tree, but one. One, do not eat from the knowledge of the good, the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat, you in it, oh, in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. And what God was telling them is experiencing the spiritual death. Okay? And in this scenario, friends, I just want you to know that actually sin is only a fruit. It's not the root. You see, Adam, when, when it came to Adam and Eve, right, they did not believe God because they started to think in their minds, God is selfish. He doesn't want to give me everything. Right? He, he, the, even the devil lied to them and said that you will not truly die for God knows that in that day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. And he thought to them, huh? why does God not want me to do that? Why does God want to withhold His blessing to me? Is there something wrong that I have done? Am I not good enough? I thought He created this garden for me. I thought He, created, he gave Jesus everything in this life for me to experience the abundant life. But eh, no. See, the problem is this. All right? I submit to you. We get tempted. We cut corners. We sin. Because we start to doubt God's love for us. We start to think that we have been lied to by the devil and we, st we start to think that, oh, you know what? God is selfish. He doesn't want me to be blessed. But you know what? We must understand this. God did not want them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because they cannot handle the truth. Only God can have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because He is judged and He is judged because He is sinless. He is able to make the right decisions. He is sinless. He is just. But we are not. Okay? When we eat, we, we don't want to come under God. We just want to be God of our own lives. But when we sin, when we, sin we cannot handle the result of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's what happened. Friends, they ate from it. And then they realized that, oh, their eyes were open. Then they start to see their nakedness. All along, God's glory had protected them, covered them. But then they start to see each other's sin. All right? Friends, that is the way the world has struggled all this while because they have been lied to. The lie is that God does not love me enough. And my submission to you is this we cut corners, we lie. We cheat. We hurt other people. Why? If I knew that someone loves me enough, someone higher than me, someone more powerful than me, someone in Romans 8.32 who has given us, if God has not spared His only Son, but freely, you see the word again from Genesis 2, freely gave Him up for us all, will He not also through Jesus freely give us all? All things. When I have Jesus, amen to that. When I have Jesus, I have been given freely from God. And we cannot, and we should not, and we should reject this lie that you see up there that God does not love me enough. And folks, friends, this is where we, as the believers of Jesus, must shine for Jesus. We must show the world, you know what? Let me tell you, you don't have to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat from the tree of life. I want to share with you Jesus so that you don't have to depend on your own strength. You don't have to strive. You don't have to wait for... 9.30 p.m. to track NYSE, all right? You can just lift your life, rest in Jesus, knowing that your future is bright. You have an eternal destination, destiny with God Almighty who loves you and demonstrated that love while we were yet sinners. He died for us and now is alive and living in us. Amen? 
Now, I just want to go to an Old Testament story. And this is a negative demonstration. It's a, a story of a person who lacked in integrity. And that's the story of King David. Now, we remember in the, the, probably the most famous bad thing that David was that he committed adultery. Right? And when we look at Psalm 51, it reminds us of the story of how he prayed this prayer of trying to be accepted. Now, David lived under the Old Covenant. Okay? In Romans 4, he said, he looked at the blessedness of those people who the Lord does not count their iniquity against them. Who is that? Us. David was not in that. David wasn't under the covenant of grace. He looked forward and he was jealous because he, when he prays his prayer, you can, you can see, you can experience the emotion that went through. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit, spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me in your generous spirit. David sinned against God. And the story was like this. How this psalm came about was after David had committed adultery, he thought, oh, nobody knew. Integrity, right? Doing right when no one is looking. He said, oh, nobody knew. And then his friend, Prophet Nathan comes up to him. And Prophet Nathan relates a story to King David. Alright? Actually, it's not a story, it's a test. He's delivering the message from God himself. He said, okay, visitor comes into town, rich man, poor man. Rich man is everything, everything that he has, every, every single resource, every single cow, ox, every single uh, sheep, everything. Right? But what happens is that this rich man takes one, one sheep belonging to a poor man. Now this sheep is so precious. He eats from his table, this sheep. It's like family. Eats from his table. They, they treat it so preciously. But the rich man takes it and sacrifices it for the, the, the visitor. Now when King David heard it, you know what? He was incensed. He was incensed. He was angry. And he says, surely this man must die for whatever he did. He was angry. And then you know what? This is the response from Nathan. Thus saith the Lord. This is what God says to you. You have done all these evil things before the Lord. You know, he says this in this, in this verse, right? He says, uh, Prophet Nathan, as he's speaking from God, he was telling David, I gave you your master's house. Your master's wives for, keep, for your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. Oof. And if it had been too little, I would have given you much more. When I read this, years ago in my life, I was struggling with integrity issues. I was. And then when I read this, right, tears started to flow. Even as I was preparing, when I read this, when I wrote this message out, just started to flow and I realized that, you know what? God has given me everything. Why do we want to ask from the world? Why do we think that we have to use our intelligence, our own wisdom, our arm of flesh? If it wasn't enough, ask God. It's a precious, powerful lesson for me. If it had been too little, friends, was it too little? He had given David everything. And yet, it wasn't enough for David. Yet, he made the mistake of listening to the enemy's lie. He thought, you know what? I will, I will take what doesn't belong to me. The little lamb that doesn't belong to me. I'll take it. And not only that, the poor man was Uriah. Not just he, com he took his wife, David took Uriah's life as well. And you know what? This is really sad. This is a story of integrity failed. Because what happened was, yes, as you saw the Psalm 51, as you saw David knew how to throw himself in the grace and mercy of God. He said, only to you, have I sinned? 
He said that. He confessed. And he knew that God is a gracious God. However, David still lived under the law. And there was exacting. It would demand the highest level to be paid. Friends, David paid the highest level. He lost his firstborn. Not only that, his other son ran after him. His other son was actually running to take what belonged to the father that was his blessing. The other son tried to kill his own father. It's really sad, right? You see, the integrity issues that David faced, he did not walk in, in, in integrity before the Lord. You know, even in his own family, that one brother raped a sister and he did nothing. He did not correct his own children. He did not. You know, when, when, when Pastor Peter shared earlier on, right, about the teacher, his father, being the Sunday school teacher of his friend who, who was a pastor in, in London as well as in Johor, right? That is an amazing testimony of integrity done right. When he shared last week about finding the meal order, you know, to give his, uh, that his father wrote to the missionary, that tithe is like Melchizedek tithing through the loins and we in Christ receive it. David sowed wrongly, all right? decision and the result overflow into his children that his children ended up dying losing out in life because the decision that David did was not of integrity now I'm not here to condemn you friends, I also make mistakes in my life I remember one time when I was studying there was an exam that we all uh, took and then after that um, what we did was we looked at previous years. You know, a lot of you look at past year example, right? So I look at previous year's example and then we look at it as an example and we filled up the exam questions as a team. We had four people in a team. But when we came to submission, the lecturer saw our answers and saw the answer of the, uh, uh, of the previous years and he immediately assumed that we cheated Okay, in the exam. Now, friends, I must tell you, okay, in all honesty, we did not cheat. Okay, if you look very, very carefully at the answer, it was not plagiarism, okay, a word that is very popular nowadays. It is not, okay. But when he asked the four of us, did you cheat? We all got together and said, hey, how? Did we cheat or not? All four of us unanimously say, we did not cheat. We did not copy and paste. Okay, no plagiarism. But what happened was this. One of them said, I yeah, never mind lah. Never mind, I tell you what. You know, let's not argue with the lecturer, you know. I will mengaku. Okay, I will sacrifice myself and I will confess that I, I cheated. All of you, you all didn't cheat. Okay, I take the blame. One person, I'll take the blame. Then I look at him. I said, did you cheat or not? He said, no, 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 no. I don't want to. But I'll sacrifice for all of you. And I said to him, no, if you did not cheat, then don't say it. If you did not cheat, say that you did not cheat. Okay? Don't try to be a hero because we present ourselves. We are integrity, right? Present ourselves. What we say is what we do. We didn't cheat. So therefore, we submit to you. Okay? But he didn't. He went ahead and wrote to the lecturer and he said he cheated. And you know, guess what happened? All of us kena kosong, okay? We got zero because we one person admitted, and you know when you work together in a team, right? Team assignment, everybody gets the same score and we cheated. So I went up, so I went up to this guy and friends, please don't get me wrong, okay? I was full of righteousness and I told, I made a mistake. I told this person, right? You do this, you claim that you did this as, as you lied, but you actually didn't. But you know what? That is not integrity. If you did not cheat, then say you did not cheat. I was desperate, okay, because I was trying to justify myself. So I said, you know, why did you do this? He said, it's okay, it's okay, you know, I, I, I sacrificed myself. No, 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 no. All of us got the impact, right? It's not just you who could not sacrifice, everybody else got it, you know? And I said this, in hurt, I said this to him, what will your children think of you when you do that? Woo! <laughs> Full of condemnation, right? Again, I'm wrong, okay? I should not have said that. I apologize to him later, 
but till today, he doesn't want to talk to me. Okay? <laughs> we should not do that. Okay, we should not. All right? But positively, I thank God for people who have gone before me. My parents, for example, they're amazing examples of integrity that flows through generations. When you see my mom and dad give blessed people, you know what? Yes, we may see it and think, oh, they're doing it for other people. Or we can say, oh, they're doing it for themselves. But you know what? When no one is looking, I am looking. I, the child, are looking and I'm observing. So whatever I'm doing today, whatever a lot of pastors, a lot of teachers in TNCC are doing, I believe of the good example of the people that have gone before us. Amen? So knowing God's love, I think it's important that we, 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 say, we look at this, knowing God's love results in a life of integrity. I just want to give one final example of Jesus. Jesus is a person who really understood God's love, the, God the Father's love, all right? You know, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, he looked at the cup. And he says that, God, Father, if it's possible, let this cup be taken away from me. And this can be juxtaposed to the story that we heard earlier on about the two sons, Right? He could actually say, yes, I will go, I'll die on a cross. But when he came to the actual act, Jesus could have, could have said, not your will, but mine be done. He could have said that, right? And you know what? If he, if he did that, do you know that Jesus will still be alive today? If Jesus did not go to the cross, he lives from a power of an endless life. Today, he would be physical. All right, if you want to see Jesus, you can see Jesus Physically, okay? Get on a plane, fly to Israel, go up to his house and line up together with another few million people just to see Jesus. That is if he did not die on a cross. But you know what? Everybody would be lost. Everybody would be lost because there is no perfect sacrifice. Nothing. The only way to pay for sins, for our sins, is that blood is shed. Now, God didn't want a temporal sacrifice of the blood of bulls and goats. He wanted one sacrifice forever. And that required Jesus to give it all. And what did He do? He looked into the cup. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane looked into the cup of bitterness. And He saw every single face, every single person online, every single person that I'm looking at in this hall, in this auditorium. And he looked at it, and with so much love, he did not want to be separated. He did not want to have eternal separation. So he stood up for integrity. He walked the talk. He said, not my will, but yours be done. How many of us are so grateful that he walked the talk? He went all the way. He walked to the cross of Calvary, and he did not just shed one drop of blood, he poured it all for the whole world to see, this is how much I love you. And when you notice how much Jesus loves you, it will flow in and through you. I want to be filled every day to overflowing. My cup runs over the cup of His love. And when I know that He loves me so much, you know what, friends? I know that God will provide for me. I can live a life of integrity that points and honors our Lord because I know that my God, yesterday in the worship group, you know, Jonathan shared the, the, this verse, Philippians 4.19, and my God, with such confidence, my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches, in glory in Christ Jesus. I want that kind of, I want the kind of blessing. I want the kind of source. I don't want the source of a rich man. I don't want the source of my own intellect, my own wisdom. No, I want the source to come straight from God because no man can touch it. No man can take it away. Amen? 
Now, when we look at what was said in the parable, so we see John the Baptist talking about righteousness. His baptism was the baptism of repentance. And even that, harlots, tax collectors, were pointed to him and said, they will enter the kingdom of God even before you. Who is you? What was Jesus, who was Jesus talking to? He was talking to the Pharisees. Okay? Even John the Baptist baptism tak boleh pakai, right? He was actually pointing them all to a sense of knowing and end to themselves, the Pharisees who trusted in their own flesh. He's pointing it to himself. Because Jesus was actually trying to show them and show us today that we have His righteousness if we receive Him. When we welcome Jesus in our hearts, when we make Him Lord of our lives, when we walk according to His ways, we know that we are receiving it not from our own works, not from our own righteousness, but a righteousness that is from God. And the righteous, the blessings of the righteous last forever, brings peace, brings joy, not the way the world wants it. I love it. Not just money, not just blessings. John 16.33 says, Peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. And the original Greek is, I bequeath. A bequeath is like someone rich, someone powerful, like a king. I give to you. Who wants Jesus' kind of peace? Unperturbed, unmoved, always looking to the Father. And with it comes blessings. The blessings of God likewise. Likewise. Alright, I want it to come from Jesus. Amen? So this is the main point, folks. The main point is this. Integrity will show Jesus' love and power. I want to receive God's blessing, not that I am just blessed. I want to experience God's power, not for me to just be blessed. I want the world to see it. Who here wants the world to see the love and power of Jesus? That is the reason why God wants us to walk in integrity. Our relationship with Jesus is perfect. It is. Our spirits have been made perfect in Christ. But our relationship with God is not perfect. I believe it can be perfected. Okay? It can be perfected, but we're still in the flesh. But the important thing is this, friends. I want my life, I want to walk in integrity so that it will bless other people. Amen? I just want to share with you one last thing. Joseph's story. Joseph did not live under law. And you see this verse, right? The, his master saw. His master, not a Christian, not a believer, saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hands. Church, Will you rise with me? Would you just rise with me? I just want this time for us to receive this word that the world will see. Everybody in the world will see that you have the Lord Jesus Christ. He is with you. He is in you. And all that you do prospers in your head.